put the blade of our wrist against the space between our partner's fingers, and then we're gonna snap our arm back to our chest. If he does come up and start to chase the arm, it, it, it takes a little bit of time, and we're not just leaving our elbow out away from our hips. Today, let's take a look at a small but very vexing problem that occurs when you're trying to pass half guard chest to chest. Now, passing half guard chest to chest is one of the best ways you can do it, especially no gi, because it allows you good connection. It makes it more difficult for your partner to make use of things like the knee shield, and it gets you much closer to pinning your partner's shoulders, okay, which is one of the prerequisites for passing half guard in a tight position. But this can often happen. So here we are, we've done a good job, we've gotten chest to chest, and or like we're in the process, right, of getting down here, and our partner is really good at hand fight. And so what they do is they take this inside hand. So usually his top hand is framing here, okay? But he takes this inside hand and he starts to fight my wrist. And what, what this means is that when I go to try to drive my arm through like around the corner to get the cross face, it makes it very difficult. What's worse also is, especially if we're here, if he catches the wrist and he's able to push the arm back behind my hips, now he can start to chase for Kimura. And this is like a devastating situation. So, the first rule of thumb is when we're here and we're in this tight position, we wanna dominate the inside position in the same way that we would from a standing position, and we wanna have our hands in, on the inside. So be disciplined with your hand position, that's the first thing. So don't just kinda hang out here, allowing your partner to get wrist grips on you. Um, and then at early stages, if it's possible here, if I see him like really fighting hard for the wrist here, yeah, like we'll do a little bit of hand fighting. But you've gotta be careful again, because if you're too, uh, hold tight here, so if you're too, um, cavalier with your wrist fighting, and you, uh, your hand fighting, you start pulling your arm back, and once again, your partner is gonna come up and chase you. All right, so what do we do about this? There are two options. So the first is, when he reaches forward and gets this grip, this grip is really, really good at preventing our hand from coming forward. So I can't really drive my left arm forward to wrap his head, okay, that's the goal. But it doesn't do very much to prevent my arm from moving backwards. Now, you have to be specific about which way you're moving your arm backwards. If I try to take my hand to the outside here, right, in the effort to pull it backwards, his hand covers my wrist, so it's gonna be impossible. What we've gotta do is if we're tight here and we're locked in a place where our partner's controlling our wrist, the first thing is we've gotta make a little space. So we'll move back and away, and then we're gonna take our hand, we're gonna turn our thumb to the inside position, okay? so that we can put the blade of our wrist against the space between our partner's fingers, and then we're gonna snap our arm back to our chest. Now when we do this, if he goes to chase my wrist, that's fine, I can sit up a little bit, and we have a very conservative arm position. Now from here, we can come back, catch our partner's wrist, and then from here move to the bicep, and then move our arm up towards our partner's head. So once again, we're playing here, and our partner takes this grip on the wrist. Don't try to fight through it. You're gonna back away, snap it off, and then if possible, you'll bring your arm directly through and now you can start to cross this. An alternative is if your partner takes a grip here and you feel like you can't break it this way, you can be conservative with your, um, with your break and take your arm to the outside. What does that look like? So as he goes to block this, I feel like I can't bring my arm in, okay? There's not enough space. So I'm gonna back out. The right hand is gonna come here to his wrist and I'm just gonna snap it off. Alternatively, I can move my hand back a little bit, and when we do this, we wanna make sure that we pull our elbow back, so if he does come up and start to chase the arm, it, it, it takes a little bit of time, and we're not just leaving our elbow out away from our hips, okay, away from our ribs. So this is, again, it's a small problem, but it's a vexing problem, and, the, and what happens is the better you are, the better your partner is at hand fighting, the more you're gonna see this. A lot of times what will happen is as you get in here, your partner starts fighting the wrist, you keep trying to fight through, and then he uses this as a little bit of a decoy. He hips out, brings his right knee through the space, and now from here, you're not in half guard anymore, now you're in the guard. And when he has the guard play uh, and the ability to, to put space between us, now we can use this grip even more effectively. So, when you're in top position and your partner is working to control that wrist, don't pull your arm back. You're gonna get Kimura. Bring your hand to the inside position. Then from there, you can work back to inside space at your partner's bicep. Control the head, and then you'll be ready to go. Uh, questions, comments, anything you need to know, put it down below. We have some links to some other stuff that we've been up to. Uh, if you like this, please subscribe, and we'll see you soon.